Hello, what's going on guys? Derek James here again with GovKidMethod.com and today we have another uh, FBO Live reading RFPs episode and as you can see today I have teed up a carpet removal and solicitation. This is one that everybody can kind of relate to and, and mentally understand so I thought it would be a good exercise to go through together um, to you know essentially slice this this RFP up see what's going on with it i i did pull it up but i have not gone through it yet so um we're like i said we're going to go through this together um and today's september 26th we are on the brink of the end of the, the fiscal quarter so i hope you all had a good um fiscal 2019 i hope it was profitable for you if you haven't started your govcon business i hope that um some things have pushed you in the direction if you see fit to starting your business uh, in FY uh, 2020. I mean, it's, you know, there's there's no better time than the present to get started. So hopefully, you know, um, you know, any of the, the videos or resources that I, you know, provide on, you know, the, the website or not here on YouTube, um, hopefully it gives you the confidence to, you know, start going after things yourself or to expand into the government world if you already have a, a business in place which is you know just that much better but you don't have to <clears throat> and uh the other thing kids are back in school you know it's september fall is here we've passed the first day of fall that means all of the the colds and the the sniffles and all that are going around um i'm hopefully fighting it you know a few people in the house here have uh, been sneezing a lot and uh i'm kill i find myself clearing my throat a lot the last 24 hours so Bear with me if I have a bit of a attack on the the video today, but I think I'm okay. I've been doing some gargling. Now we can officially get started. So, carpet removal installation. This is out of the Air Force, um, Davis Monthan Air Force Base, and that's in Arizona. And the place of performance for this carpet removal is going to be uh, in Tucson. Yeah, removal and installation. Next codes, they've got 314, 110, carpet and rugs, mills, textile products. That's perfect. And then we've got a small business set aside. This was posted originally September 20th. It says the response date is the 27th, which would be tomorrow. However, I'm looking at the original synopsis. And since then, it appears that there were two changes made at September 23rd, 24th. So, um... A fairly large amount of stuff written here in the change but it says the purpose of this mod is to attach the PWS along with the carpet color selections with Air Force carpet ordering guides so it sounds like they didn't have that originally <clears throat> and then the second one is the purpose of this mod is to further clarify the requirement and include details from the site visit into the PWS and the solicitation so they probably had questions that they had to um, include explanations into or some things that were missing. And this is why it's important to read mods. It says this mod is also extends the opportunities for a site visit on September 25th, which was yesterday. So um, I don't see, oh yeah, no, I don't see anything about the response date being pushed back, but let's, yeah. It just says that they pushed the site visit back. I'm going to go ahead and just open this. Like I said, I literally haven't opened anything, so I'm I'm looking at this for the first time with you guys. And that's how we do it. That way I can't like figure everything out ahead of time and then just be like, "Look how easy it is. I spent the last 3 hours reading through this and now I've it's like, no, I'm doing it all on the spot to show you, you know, hopefully a level of of uh, literacy that you you can get up to." So this is the PWS. They're telling us <clears throat> You know, Davis Monthan Air Force Base, blah, blah, blah. Prior to work, you're going to coordinate. Yep, this is all all good. You know, waste disposal, you have to throw away the carpet, carpet installation. There's certain pre-install requirements. They want to do a skim coating on the floor. And then they're talking about the hallways, bathrooms, offices. Um, so they're laying out the preferences for the style and color in each area, which is nice. Um, transition to base walls. Contractor shall remove old 
cove base replaced with new four inch rubber. So these are just all details and specs to include into the work. Not exactly what I'm looking for just yet. Contractor travel, you know, no loitering holidays. This is all, you know, safety, straightforward stuff. Security requirements. I, I don't think that there is a security clearance required. but they just want the employees that are working to have a pass. And whenever you're working for a contractor on site, you always have to wear your badge with the contractor name on it. So, I mean, you shouldn't ever be walking down if you're an employee or you have employees, they shouldn't be walking into your customer's base without any sort of identifiable information like a, a lanyard or a badge that goes around their neck, um, you know, or hangs from their pocket, but really it's supposed to go, you know, around your neck. So if somebody stops you and asks you, you know, you're, you're a contractor and you're working for such or such company, uh, etc. I'm going to spend a little bit more time going through this because I think I'm going to transition into just doing one, one opportunity per video. That way I can, you know, even with the titles, that way I can target, you know, the titles of, you know, when I put these up on YouTube and that way, you know, um, you'll know right off the bat if it's a video that you want to watch or not, you know, if you don't, care about you know carpet removal and installation but more importantly if you don't care about getting the practice you know i chose carpet because it's something that it's not going to trip anybody up trying to understand what it is rather hey you know this may not be for you but a lot of this can apply to you and since it's carpet you can you know get your head around what the the good or service is so that's not gonna impede your your learning or your understanding so, um, you know, but if you decide it's not for you, then you know right off the bat, there's not like four other opportunities after this. Um, so I think that's how I'm gonna start doing these. Um, so, so this is just a standard PWS, nothing crazy stood out to me. I didn't really get information that I was hoping for. And, you know, I kind of blew through all this text that was written in the FBO uh, posting, which is usually just copy and paste, but I'll, I'm gonna skim it real fast right now. I'm looking for a start date. I'm looking for pricing. I'm looking for information on how to price it. You know, they're telling me quantity one unit, CLIN 001. So that tells me that this is just gonna be like a one job FFP firm fixed price where it's like, hey, you know, give us one number and do it for that one number. If you end up doing it for less on your end, good for you. Um, you know, I'm also looking for evaluation criteria of, you know, is this gonna be lowest price or best value? Please refer to the justification approval for approved tier one vendors for carpet procurement. So, you know, there's certain places that you can only buy your carpet from. You can't just buy it from, you know, Joe's Crab Shack slash carpet installs. <laughs> you know, like they they want a certain quality tier. Um, it does say period of performance is 90 days. Uh, ARO after receipt of order. So that's good to know that you got about 90 days. This is probably going to be done in the winter time since it's the end of September. The government will place an order for those who meet lowest price and technically acceptable. So that's telling us it's probably going to be lowest price. Technically acceptable is defined within the solicitation for items that meet the salient characteristics of the product or service. So Whoever's lowest price that's going to provide carpet from an approved vendor, um, they're going to win this. So I'm going to go ahead and open these these documents now. We've got the solicitation, which is one and a half pages long, maybe the shortest solicitation I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> um, yeah, they intend to warm a firm fixed price. That's what we said, and this is one job. This is all the information that we just read. They just copy and pasted it. So we'll close that out, move on to the next. We have a wage determination. This is a SCA wage, Service Contract Act wage determination, which means, uh, you know, if this is a SCA wage clause incorporated solicitation that, you know, the employees will have to pay a, well, the employees will have to be paid rather um, a minimum based on these different occupation codes. I'm going to try to do a control F for carpet. And I didn't think 
but I don't know if it's working. Employee. Yeah, I don't think my control find is, is working. So carpet may still be in here. So I'll do a quick, quick, quick scroll. Now we've got furniture maintenance. I know this is probably, probably kind of small for you guys to see. We've got autom automotive, food preparation, furniture, general services, and support. Um, that may be okay. They've got a, uh, let me see, do they have anything? Not really. I keep looking. Then they have health occupations. Nope. Information and arts. They've got administrators, IT, instructional, laundry service, machine, material handling. Um, anything in material handling? No. Mechanics and maintenance aircraft. Mechanic. Personal needs. Homemaker. I really wish my control F worked. Recreation, occupations, technical occupations. You know, if nothing else, we just have to use like a general laborer. Um, transportation, mobile equipment, and then miscellaneous. Anything in the miscellaneous? I don't see anything. I'm, I'm really surprised that I didn't, f I swear there's something in here. But this is what you guys have to do. Um, you know, under general services, they have cleaner vehicles, elevator operators, gardeners, housekeeping aid, janitor, laborer, grounds maintenance, mater, houseman, pruner, tractor operator, trail, maintenance worker, window cleaner. None of those, you know, come close to what I'm looking for. And, you know, I, I just not, I'm not seeing it. I'm not even seeing like a general laborer. Like I really want to find this while, I, while I'm recording this for you guys. I'm, I'm so used to just using control F, but it doesn't, it doesn't pull up any of the, the words that I know are in here. But typically guys, typically it will. Um, you usually don't run into it like this. But like I said, you know, for your installers, your carpet installers, you'll have to find some sort of general laborer, you know, something that you think um, and really this is just to have like, this is just the minimum that you have to be pay them. And this is in case you get questioned by the DOL and it's a service contract act, they want to make sure you're abiding by. So I guess, let me offer that explanation that, you know, it, it's, it's the minimum that you need to be paying them. So if you get questioned, uh, carpet layer, duh, car carpenter, I knew it was in here guys. So carpet layer, 1669, that's the minimum that you want to be using for your guys. So you know, most of you probably are not in the carpeting business. Um, if you if you are in the carpeting business, hopefully, you know, you're able to pay your people at least that much in case you get questioned by the DOL and have that based out and scaled through your pricing for this job. Um, but for anybody else, you know, this applies to you as well because this con this solicitation we're looking at could, you know, be for anything and it could be your very thing that you're interested in bidding on. You would go through that same exercise of, of trying to find the, the closest um, wage uh, occupation code if it happens to be a SEA wage contract um, and you just want to make sure you're paying that minimum. So hope that little, you know, couple of minutes spent on that was helpful. So moving on to the next document, building layout and area breakdown. I'm expecting a, a map or square footage or something. So here's a map with room numbers. And then, yeah, we have square footage. So there we go. This will line up with this. And that's something that you'll use when you're, you know, estimating, you know, carpet and time and labor and stuff like that. I'm going to go to this limited sources, JNA redacted. So usually a justification and approval is them saying, hey, we're going with this company and this is the justification, um, in which case this whole thing would be a big waste of time because it's like, okay, you can't even bid on it. I mean, not a waste of time <clears throat> because it's still a, a, a fruitful exercise. 
but let me let me read this because this is um i think it's just talking about a justification for let's just read it it's for other than full and open competition it says market research was performed for the replacement of carpet where it was discovered the Air Force has a mandatory use program through strategic sourcing. The second tier requires local-based contracting offices to, comp to compete the requirement among small business installers and dealers and contractors who shall purchase the carpet from one of the awarded tier one vendors. Perfect. That's what I wanted to see. If this was full and open, that's, that means like the, the big furniture companies could go after this themselves. But they're saying now instead the Air Force base has this strategic sourcing which means it has to go to small businesses and it's okay that small businesses can in turn, you know, buy the carpet from somewhere else and then mark it up themselves and then do the, do the installation, which is, you know, for most of you watching what you would be thinking of when um, you're looking at this. I mean, I'm sure hundred percent of you watching because I'm sure none of the, the big carpet companies are, are watching <laughs> this video. Um, if so, sorry, big carpet companies, you're in trouble. You're, you can't bid this. <laughs> I'm sure you got better, bigger things to do. Uh, all terms and conditions, though, including the not to exceed pricing established with the tier one contracts shall be incorporated into all subsequent tier two contracts. So, you know, same things still apply, even though they're opening it up to small business based on the recommendations of the Air Force and the furnishing community. It has been determined a mandatory use policy is warranted for the procurement of carpet for Air Force installations located within CONUS, uh, which is the continental within the continental U.S. all over the country. Um, yeah. So that's good news. So this is the justification to allow that. So that's actually in the favor of small business. Um, we, we win another battle, guys. <laughs> another vote for small business. So I haven't seen anything at all about pricing. I haven't even seen a CLIN. I mean, I skipped this provision in clauses, but it's not going to be in here. This is just going to be a lot of the clauses. I mean... This is where the service contract SEA wage should be in here, and there should be a checkbox next to it saying it's SEA wage contract. So um, I'll see if I can show you guys that. Service contract. Oops. Act. <laughs> no results. Service contract labor standards is here, but that's not checked. And, and only if the box is checked, I mean, you know, only ones with check marks next to them, guys, when you're reading through your clauses, only those ones apply. If it's not checked, you know, they can't hold you to it. And, you know, they included that. They included a copy of the wage determination. So you would assume, right? Contracting officer is to check a box to indicate if paragraph K2 applies. If the offer does not certify to the condition and K1 and the contracting officer did not attach a service contract labor standards wage determination, the offer shall notify the contracting officer as soon as possible. And the contracting officer may not make an award to the offer if the offer fails to execute the certification in the paragraph, blah, 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 blah. So, it's like they're kind of saying like since we provided you the labor like the labor um the, the wage determination that it is inherently sca wage it didn't sound like that 16 dollars and 69 cents or whatever it was was terribly low i feel like carpet installers probably pay that minimum anyways you can always ask the question and say hey like you didn't check the box but you did attach it like here's the reporting requirements, labor standards, like price adjustment, price adjustment. They, they didn't check any of them. So you can always ask the question, but if you know, if you think you're good either way, then honestly, I wouldn't worry about it. Um, but you know, it's good. I don't always go into that this much depth on a wage determination and SEA wage pricing and all that stuff, because it is very important. Um, it's just certain situations. It's a little bit more dicey than others. And this one doesn't sound like it's too bad, but hopefully this, this exercise is valuable to you for when you, you know, read, you know, run into something that maybe it is a little more, um, the price is maybe a little bit higher than what you'd be comfortable in paying or something like that. Now, you know, that you can reach out to contracting or, or check the, the clauses to see if it's even in there and, and fight it. If it's not, 
you know, not fight it, but, you know, inquire if it's not. Um, just some things. I don't see anything about pricing, guys. I'm looking for the clin. That's that's what I'm looking for. And, you know, this is, the, I'm spending the time, you know, bear with me here because this is the only solicitation I'm, I'm looking at in this video. So I'm giving myself the time to go a little more thoroughly into these so that, you know, we can, you know, show you guys some more, some more, you know, golden nuggets and things like that, that I don't get to talk about when we do, you know, you know, four or five, six uh, RFPs in like 40 minutes. But I'm just not seeing a pricing clin. And that usually means that if you don't see it, that there isn't one. You know, this is an updated PWS, which is nice. Doesn't help me right now. And I don't see anything about evaluation factors either. Like, I mean, they're saying it's lowest price, which, you know, okay. Like there's no technical, there's no past performance. You know, they haven't even given us like a, a ROM, a rough order of magnitude. Um, I'm going to go back to the clauses and see if I can't. to see if I can't uh, see if there is a box checked for simplified acquisition, because my guess is that the, the dollar value on this is not super, super high based on how they're procuring this. I'm gonna do the same thing, control F, and I'm gonna go simplified. So a simplified acquisition threshold and does not. My, I swear my spelling is getting worse with technology, the more I use it. If this contract exceeds the simplified acquisition threshold, the contractor shall provide, okay. If this contract exceeds simplified acquisition, complete paragraph C8 and C9, only if this is expected to exceed simplified acquisition. So I, I see a lot of references to simplified acquisition, but again, I don't see a simplified acquisition with a checkbox. However, you know, this, this really doesn't help us because a lot of it's boilerplate that's in here. So we've tried to, to find that now. That's something you can always do. And um, that did not help us. Proposals are being requested and a written solicitation will not be issued, right? So really guys, so what I'm gonna do now is go back to the, the, the super long solicitation here, the one and a half page. They're literally just saying, remove and install. Please refer to the justification for approval or for approved tier one vendors for carpet. So, Here's what I would do. Cause this, I, I've run into this quite a bit. So here we find ourselves, we don't have much structure. The first thing you need to ask yourself is, can you price this? Well, they've given you square footage in a map and there was a site, you know, they had the availability for a site visit. You're probably, you probably can price this. So I, I don't think pricing is going to be an issue. You walk the site, You've got the maps, the square footage. You know, if you were bidding this, you would attend the site visit, ask any questions you want. You get the answers. Um, so you probably have all your pricing. We know that this is LPTA, and uh, you know they're just telling you you just have to buy from you know approved tier one vendors. So okay, you now you know who your you know who your uh, providers have to be, your suppliers rather have to be for the carpet. Okay, and we know the minimum you have to pay your people. In accordance, you know, we're just going to assume the SCA wage is in effect, even though they didn't, you know, check the box that we could see. <clears throat> Since this is LPTA, um, what I would what I would do, you know, you get your proposal put together. Um, let me actually, can I? Yeah, just deciding if I should be crazy or not, guys. Let me go to my website, govkidmethod.com. 
because now I don't know if you've seen, but I have some proposal um, downloadable resources there for you guys under the proposal bidding tab. So I'm going to go to the proposal template and download it and enable editing just so I can show you guys an example. So for this particular solicitation, I would have my cover page. I would fill this out. You know, this is my kind of executive summary slash company profile information. Fill all this out. You know, this is just an example template. Like all this information was based on a real opportunity that you're seeing. Um, and then what I would do is I would do past performance. I would do, I would still do technical past performance and pricing. I, I would still have that. Right now, this is queued up a little bit for a staffing plan. So take out all the staffing stuff. Under technical, what I would do is, you know, put any, you know, of your, a little bit of your fluffy soft company information, just, just a short paragraph to open it up. And then I would talk about, so, you know, I'll go ahead. I'm not going to save this anyway, so I can delete this stuff. I would talk about using approved tier one suppliers for carpet. I would, I would write to that. Um, hopefully, you know, one or two of the suppliers that you're going to use. And I would, I would put their names in there and, you know, I think, well, I'm not going to go back to it, but in the J and a, I think they referenced a few of the, the companies. So, you know, put, you know, carpet max and flooring and the flooring guys, <laughs> you know, I literally just make those up. Um, tier one vetters so you know write a paragraph or two just basically stating your intent to purchase from um and then also what i would also do is go back because they told you for each room and the hallways and all that if you remember what carpet they want so in your technical also i would you know i would build out um the types of carpet basically this is conformance with the PWS types of carpet. So now you have who you're purchasing from and then you have the types of carpet. The, the technical approach is the appropriate place to put that. Um, and then you, you could just put, uh, you know, in accordance with the SCA wage determination ABC, LLC, whatever your company is, um, affirms to compensate employees with the occupation code, whatever it was, 11011 carpet layer. So let them know that you're in, in accordance with the, the statement of, uh, or the service contract act. So, you know, these three things you could kind of build out on these three topics and just like have three or four paragraphs and that's your technical approach. You know, it shouldn't take you more than probably 45 minutes to, to bust that out. Um, and then, you know, that's all I would do for your technical approach. I mean, I wouldn't really mess with pictures or anything like that. Um, and then next I, I would include past performance if you have it. If not, don't include it because you don't, you know, you don't want to do a negative type thing and they haven't asked for it and they're not talking about, we'll give it a neutral rating if you don't have it or, or whatever. So, you know, just don't, don't complicate things. Well, you know, just, you know, if you don't have past performance, don't draw uh, awareness to that. But if you do and you have three, I would recommend using three. Um, and, and what you do is you just follow this, this layout. This is the layout that's. Uh, the common layout, the title, the magnitude, the scope. Your magnitude is just the dollar value of a project that you performed on in the past. The total is, you know, what it was or, the, or for what customer. The scope is a, a couple of sentences about the work. In this case, it would be, um, you know, maybe how, how much square footage that you had to do and maybe the type of carpet, um, you know, and was it removal only or ins installation only or both? This is both, so you'd want to use both if you could. You know, how long did it take you? You know, this one's for 90 days. Uh, this 
this job you're bidding is for 90 days. How long did it take you? You know, the longer, um, bigger jobs would be best. And then a, a point of contact, I would just give a name and email and do that for three different, um, three different past performances if you have them. But if you don't just ignore all that and, you know, take it out. Lastly, pricing proposal, there's only one CLIN. So literally, you know, delete everything, make it match to what they have. Um, use the same verbiage that they have. You always want, when it comes to pricing, you want to make sure like it's exactly what they have. So there's no questions. So what I mean by that is literally copy, I would copy and paste this, like literally copy and paste it. And then, you know, you take off the quantity quantity and put it there quantity one and then i had the defaulted uh, period of performance but here i'm just going to put what they gave us which was 90 days after receipt of order and then um this is ffp so you know you're going to delete hours and units and you're just going to give them a total now obviously on the back end and your end you're going to have you know excel spreadsheet a spreadsheet where everything is all you know, priced out and broken down. Um, do not give them that. Only give them that if they ask for it. And they might ask for it. It's really 50-50. My guess is that they won't since this is LPTA. So you, you'll you submit this. You, you have your, your fat number there or your skinny number there or, you know, however much markup you're going to put on this job. Then you'll have your past performance or you won't, depending. And then you have your technical approach, which is probably something, you know, just something nice to let them know that you are technically acceptable. Remember, LPTA means lowest price technically acceptable. So you don't just want to give them a price, even though, you know, they've given you just a, uh, you know, one CLIN and, and literally no structure besides that. But, you know, you, you fill out your cover page and your, your profile here. So, you know, you end up with a four or five, maybe six page little proposal um, that makes you technically acceptable. And then if you price this right, you just might win it. And and that's it, it's that easy guys. It's really not that bad. Um, I've tried to thoroughly go through this. I mean, I wouldn't say super thoroughly, thoroughly rather, but thoroughly enough um, to basically shine light on any dark, scary places that might, you know, stop you from, from bidding this. And, you know, as we're covering this today, you know, it's like due tomorrow. So obviously in real life, this is not practical, but, you know, I'm sure, you know, th this, this looks fairly similar to, um, you know, many RFPs and this is an RFQ. This is just a request for quote. Um, so this very much is, is similar to other things that you guys will see. So I hope that you found it helpful. Um, if you like this video, you know, I appreciate it. If you give it a like, if, um, engagement is, is super crucial on YouTube here. So, um, you know, if you want to say a great video or something like that in the comments, or if you have any questions, you know, preferably, um, drop those in the, in the, the comments here on YouTube. And last but not least, um, please uh, consider subscribing. And also, you know, if you haven't checked out uh, the website, govkidmethod.com, I've got a lot of free resources here for you. Um, you know, if you go to the homepage, you can get a copy of my free book. You just, what, what you do is you sign up for the email list, which, you know, I, I barely even email you guys. Like, don't worry about, you're not gonna get spammed, but here's the book. If you click on this, it takes you to a page where um, you just literally just type in your email. You get a copy of the free book. If you wanna learn more about me and how I won, you know, um, you know, a, a lot of contracts, we'll just say a lot of contracts within the five year period. And, um, you know, I, I share basically everything that I did and then, when you do that, automatically you get an automatic email kicked back with a download of this book. But aside from that, we've got a Facebook group with over 300 members, um, you know, and a lot of, you know, I've got downloadable capability statements. So just so much stuff, too much to, to talk about right now, but check out the, the website, govkidmethod.com if you have not already. And uh, I'll see you guys next time. Hope you enjoyed this video. Until next time, later guys.